All right, everyone, I don't think I need to tell you what we're doing, but just in case, we're going to board the Blasphemy and download all of the ship's data in order to find out what the hell happened. We'll be meeting up with the Nazareth boarding party at the bridge, where we will exchange data regarding to our military information. If any of you have any problems with that, need I remind you that we are honor-bound to giving them that data, so don't get any ideas of keeping any information from them. Finally, if there are any survivors, make sure you bring them with us and then get the hell out of there. This is going to be a simple in and out mission and I don't want anyone to act like dumbasses while you're out there. Alright, good luck soldiers. Uh -huh. Greetings, travelers. I'm your host, the C-Dot that knows a lot, Dr. Waluigi. While I love many retro video games, the one that I hold close to my heart is Banjo-Kazooie. This was one of the five games I remember playing and made me want a Nintendo 64 and to continue collecting other consoles. So without this game, I wouldn't be the big nut for video games I am today. Which is sad that Microsoft has allowed Rare to spiral into mediocrity and have turned their games into hot garbage. However, it does look like Microsoft is getting their head out of their ass. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how Banjo-Kazooie compares to the spiritual successor that came out on all consoles, Ukulele. Uh -huh. For those who haven't played these games yet, Banjo-Kazooie is a collect-a-thon platformer that was made in 1998 for the Nintendo 64. The games received high praise from gamers at the time, and it has gone on to be one of the most beloved games of all time, which was followed up by a just as well-remembered sequel for the Nintendo 64, and a sequel for the Xbox 360 that was met with enough fan rage to quell a soccer mom on her period. Jump forward 18 years later, and much of the original team who had previously worked on Banjo-Kazooie left Rareware and started their own company called Platonic Games, where they decided that the first game they would release was a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie known as Ukulele. While most critics gave mediocre reviews of the game, many fans still consider this game to a perfect return of the Rareware Collectathon format. I myself think that this game is well worth the praise it gets, and I think it deserves more praise for what it was able to do in today's market. Both of these games' plots are similar in how they are presented to the player. In Banjo-Kazooie, you play as a bear and a bird duo named, well, Banjo and Kazooie, who live their lives out in a small house at the bottom of Spiral Mountain. However, an evil witch named Gruntilda comes down from her lair to capture Banjo's little sister Tootie in order to steal her beauty and become the fairest of them all. It's up to Banjo and Kazooie to climb Gruntilda's lair and save Tootie from her evil plans. With the other contestant, Ukulele is about a chameleon and a bat named again, Yuka and Laylee, who live their lives quietly on Shipwreck Creek, until an evil corporate business B, named Capital B, decides to steal all the books in the world, including one that our heroes have, so they march forth to Hyvory Towers to get back their stolen property. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, Ukulele's plot is a little weak compared to the grand adventure of Banjo-Kazooie. But there are a few things that I do like about each plot. For one thing, I like that Ukulele pokes fun at their buyout from Microsoft by making the heroes and villains similar to what they went through. However, while these jokes are riddled throughout games, I find that Banjo-Kazooie is the more appealing of the two plots, as the goal is more personal and makes the gamer, in my opinion, want to play through and see how it ends. This round goes to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh -huh. The cast of each game you would think is similar by design, but there are a few surprises in each game. 
With Banjo-Kazooie's cast, I think of them in the same way that I think of 90s cartoon characters. You have the kind-hearted and lovable strongman in Banjo, his smart-ass and critical thinker in Kazooie. Many of these traits are also found in the other characters like the wise hermit Mumbo Jumbo and the timid but courageous character of Bottles. The same could be said of Yuka Laylee, but I find that Yuka is able to tolerate more of Laylee's crap than Banjo does with Kazooie. With Yuka Laylee's cast, I find that they tend to take caricatures from other popular series. For example, the character of Trousers, the snake reminds me more of Moneybags from the Spyro series than something that was intentionally made for this game. It's for that reason that I tend to lean more to the cast of Banjo-Kazooie, as most of their characters are more memorable and made the game a big reason why I wanted to play this series again. This round goes to Banjo-Kazooie. For this section, I will be comparing both games on the formats I'm most familiar with. I do know that these games have been updated over the years, but I feel it's unfair to judge those versions when I've only played the N64 and PS4 versions of them. Both of these games, in my opinion, are the best looking in terms of when they came out. I feel that while Super Mario 64 set the standards for what 3D games could look like, Banjo-Kazooie did improve on those graphics. However, it is clear Banjo-Kazooie might be a well-designed game. I personally feel that Ukulele is easily the better looking game for two reasons. The first being is that the worlds are more memorable. While Banjo-Kazooie is well remembered for how expansive the worlds were, the early worlds just come across as simple rush-through worlds. While Ukuleles were more expansive and could grow as you collected more of the collectibles throughout the game. The second and the most important reason why I think the presentation is better in Ukulele is because of how much more you can do in each world. Yes, in Banjo-Kazooie there are lots of things to do in each world, but unlike Ukulele you have a much vaster and wider expanse to cover. When I was replaying these games, I was drawn in by how I could go from one part of the world and see how the main hub world affects this place, such as the ice world being created because it's right next to the AC in Hyvory Tower. Don't get me wrong, Magic Kazooie had this too with the levels like Bubble Goob Swamp and Click Clock Wood, but they feel like they were a part of the tower where, whereas Ukulele used a more creative way to make the hub world work. So, I'm sorry for Banjo fans, but this round goes to Ukulele. One part of video games that I think is important for any gamer is the sound design and the music, and these two games revel in that. One main reason that nostalgic gamers like myself remember these games so fondly is how they used many different sounds for many different items and characters. With both games, as you collected something throughout the level, you would often hear something related to that collectible. For example, one of the main collectibles in Banjo-Kazooie are musical notes, so you would hear a musical note sound related to that collectible. Same thing with Ukulele, when you heard their main collectible, which were quills. As for the music, it cannot be described how well it was put together by the Rareware team. Most of the music in both these games are credited to Grant Kirkhope, who was one of the main composers for each game. It's not hard to think of any Rareware game without him or his team doing the music for it, so it was hard for me to choose between these two games for which is better in this category, to the point that I have to call a tie on this one. I know that may seem like I'm cheating, but both these games have really good sound design and music, with Banjo's more cartoony and upbeat style of music to the lush and soothing style in the Yuga games. I have no choice but to give these two a point on how glorious their sound and music are. This is a tie for both Banjo-Kazooie and Ukulele. This will be 
be the final round and we'll decide which of these games is the best. Both of these games are similar in style as they are both collectathon platformers that give us interesting worlds both visually and auditory. However, what sets these two apart is the feeling of progression. While I complimented on Ukulele's presentation and how expansive the worlds were built, I can't say that I was all that interested with how lacking the story was and how I felt with the controls for this game. While I will fully admit the N64 controllers of Banjo-Kazooie are stiff and slow, it made the game easier to play through and solve some of the puzzles that were tricky. With Ukulele's controls, I found it hard to do some of the puzzles or even play the game because of how slippery and loose the controls were, especially during the Carto segments of the game, where apparently controlling a living minecart is fucking possible So, this round goes to Banjo-Kazooie, with the tally of Banjo at 3 and Yuka at 2. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let it not be said that either of these games are bad. I think that they're both very good games that any fan of the collectathon genre should check out. I just feel like people really need to stop treating ukulele like it's a sin against nature and that a hat in time is the true reboot of this genre of gaming. If I have to give this game a rating, I would give Ukulele an 8 out of 10. Check it out if you can find it for a decent price. You won't be disappointed. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Waluigi, and remember, don't judge a book by its cover because you'll never know what's inside. Good night, everyone. <coughs> Any news? Not yet, Doc. It looks like they're just arriving at the bridge. What about the gamer group? They're heading for the engineering deck. But why would they go? Are we online? Ah. <clears throat> Commander, what's the status of the blasphemy? She was hit pretty hard, Doc. It looks like there was a war zone in here. What about the crew? Are they alright? Well, that's the weird thing, sir. The crew is alive, but they appear to be sleeping. Sleeping? Oh, God. Get out of there! Engineering! Beam them! Ha ha ha! You're too late, little reviewer! Ha ha ha! No, goddammit, no!